This is a summary video of what we've been looking at for depressions and anticyclones, just in case you would like a little bit of extra support to try and get this into your head. Now, remember, depressions are formed whenever you get your PM, your polar maritime air, meeting your tropical maritime air here. They don't mix, the front forms between them, and that organizes itself into that anti-clockwise circulation of air with your warm front, your warm sector, your cold front, and after the cold front. In contrast, anticyclones in the face of it are pretty straightforward. They're, they're quite simple little features in that they don't have any fronts. Um, they have um, this clockwise circulation of air around the center of high pressure like that. Okay, let's look uh, at some of the similarities and differences. Depressions are low pressure, anticyclones, high pressure. Depressions have fronts, anticyclones don't have fronts. Depressions, because they've got fronts where the air rises, cools and condenses, have cloud and rain. Anticyclones, because it's high pressure, the air is falling. The air falls, it warms, you're not getting condensation, so you're not getting cloud and rain. Depressions have the isobars very close together, uh, so it tends to be windy. Anticyclones have isobars far apart, so it tends not to be windy. Uh, so let's take a look then at some more detail of the depressions and the weather, because as it passes over... This brings us different types of weather conditions. Uh, this table is extremely important. Spend some good time going through that. Remember, it takes about 24 hours for a depression to pass over typically, and it approaches from the west, so you read here from the right to the left. And for each of these, you've got the description of what happens and the explanation. Just work your way across those rows one by one, making sure that you know that in your head. As the depression passes over, as it comes over ahead, it passes so we can stay put and the depression that passes the first thing you'll experience is before the warm front then the warm front itself the clouds will get lower and thicker and will bring rain uh, then you're into the warm sector and you've got a tm air mass there tropical maritime so the temperature will rise little or no cloud or rain then along comes the cold front and when the cold front arrives you get your cumulonimbus clouds those are the heaviest or that's where you get the heaviest rain in a depression and then as it passes over, the temperature drops down again because you're now in a polar maritime air mass and you've got cumulus clouds bringing showers. Now, if you get a question about this in the exam, what you need to do is to identify which aspect of the weather that you're going to be asked about. Then you need just to kind of visualize this in your head. In this case, your temperature, you read across for your description. You've got to explain here you read across for your explanation as well for that one. So that's the passage of a depression and the weather it brings. With an anticyclone, what we're looking at here are primarily the summer and winter differences. And uh, the temperatures will be higher in the summer and they'll be lower in the winter. The reason for that is a couple of points here. You have got longer days in the summer, uh, so you get lots of heat being received, shorter nights, and the heat escapes because there's no cloud cover, but because the nights are short, less heat escapes. The second reason is because of the high angle of the sun in the sky. The sun's rays approach at a higher angle and they're more concentrated. The opposite is the case for the winter. You've got shorter days, less heat is, re is received. Longer nights with no clouds, lots of heat escapes. And secondly, the sun is lower in the sky. It approaches at a lower angle and therefore the heat energy is spread out a little bit more. The second difference in the summer and winter is in humidity. In humidity, you're not going to get um, clouds or rain in an anticyclone, but you will get morning dew very early in the morning in the summer. And the temperatures can fall away very, very quickly in the winter, giving you fro fog and frost. Next up, satellite images. There's that very, very distinctive pattern of cloud. What's the pattern look like? Well, I see your billy goat with your horns and your wee billy goat beard and your big, big long neck and the dandruff in behind. If you can see that pattern there, or whatever pattern you see well and good, that's what you should recognize it, what it would look like in a satellite image. A high pressure, because the air is falling, and it is warming, and you're not getting condensation, so you're not getting any cloud. What's that cloud there is to do with this front here, but the high pressure over Europe is not bringing any cloud at all there. And this brings us to our last little slide here, which shows you your high pressure here with the wind circulating around in the clockwise direction, your low pressure with the air circulating in an anti-clockwise direction. Isobars far apart, 
so light winds isobars very close together so stronger winds no fronts here you've got a, uh, your fronts there your warm front your warm sector your cold front uh, and there are your differences and similarities in a depression and an anticyclone